Hey everyone, it's Christine and I just have a very small window today but you know I'm going to take it and I want to share with you God's word as he has spoken to me and I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord will just release his word through me today. Um, I've been through a couple of days in all honesty where it has been quite a battle um, on a number of fronts and I'm going to be very transparent and open with you today because I believe some of those battles you will be experiencing too and also the battles that I have been through over the last couple of days in, in prayer uh, I take great encouragement from the truth and the reality that we always fight from a position of victory but I feel like I've been fighting for many of you who will be hearing this word today I have cried for you so as the Lord speaks receive his love for you today receive his words through me today and receive the change the transformation to your circumstances that only the Lord Jesus Christ can bring to you today through the power of the Holy Spirit I was thinking yesterday morning following a business meeting that um, that we had and for many people right now in business I understand the challenges that you're going through I understand some of that pain the uncertainty the not knowing and the heartache that goes with that my heart has ached for the business world right now I have wept and I have sobbed and I have cried out to God for that business domain for Jesus to be made known to those business leaders right now that people business leaders those in senior positions at work and employees would not think that they can just go from this season into business as normal business as usual there has been a reset and I am praying and although my heart has ached that businesses and leaders and particularly the children of God will get on board with what God is doing with what he is saying and with the new that he is bringing into the next season um, I was in this meeting yesterday it was online um, there was three other uh, men present uh, two other two were fellow directors in the company and whilst we were talking and having to look at different decisions some uncomfortable decisions um, and then all eyes turned to Christine so Christine what do you think and all I wanted to do in that moment was ooze strength. All I wanted to do was to be able to say, this is the way we should go. Um, this is how we should invest. This is the next step. But instead, in total humility, I surprised myself and I certainly surprised everybody else. Um, but I just began to cry and the tears streamed down my cheeks and all I can say is hey I'm I'm so sorry guys what you're seeing right now is some of the the prayers the tears the heart I have felt that Jesus has behind the scenes that I just know God is longing for those in business to come with him into the new that he has for us and my tears were flowing and in my honesty and in my humility I said because do you know what guys no one has the answer right now I don't have the answer I don't know the way to go we have never been this way before but we need to as leaders in business right now just as Jesus said and that he did nothing without first seeing his father what his father was doing so it must be with us right now that we are totally if it was enough for Jesus to be totally dependent on the Holy Spirit and what he saw his father doing how much more do we need 
the fullness of the Holy Spirit in this hour of God's power. How much more do we need to be seeking God as to what our Heavenly Father is wanting to create because he is the creative God. He is the innovative one. He is the one who will innovate through us. He is the one who will produce something new through us, who will di diversify through us. We want to get into the God zone and get into what God has for us. And I left that meeting and I I knew that call inside me just for, for prayer and I walked around the garden and I cried out to God. I cried out with such deep pain in spirit that God, if you do not save us, we will not be saved. God, if you do not help us, then we will not be helped. And I sensed, the Bible says that Jesus intercedes for us continually before the Father. He is the great high priest who has gone before us, who has conquered death and hell and every lack and every sickness at the cross. And now he intercedes, he prays before the Father for us, that we would come into the fullness of all that God has for us. And I sense the heart, just a taste of the heart of Jesus that aches for business right now, that actually just as my heart was crying if you don't help us we'll not be helped I suddenly sense that that is the place the Holy Spirit longs to bring every business leader to and every leader in ministry as well to um my heart and I'm, I'm blessed the Bible speaks about um the the double portion God has blessed you and he has blessed me in this hour of his power we are his kings and we are his priests i'm not going to go into detail on that now because i've ministered and and spoken on that message before which you can by all means i would recommend you go back and you listen to um but elijah, elijah before he left the earth and elisha understood that his master would be going elisha asked of elijah let me have a double portion of your blessing. We as God's kings and priests have that double portion today. The kings represent those called to business, to rule, to reign in the commerce world, in nations, um, and to do great works and great exploits for God in all of those different spheres. The priests are those who were called to minister to God in the temple and before the people. Now, in this era, since Jesus died on the cross and poured out his Holy Spirit, and particularly in this final hour on the earth, this hour of God's power, there is a double portion of God's Spirit upon us. Will we recognise and will we ask God just as Elisha did? And he said to Elijah, let me have a double portion. Do you know? Those kind of faith-filled requests please and delight the heart of God because they just give God room. I almost said permission. It's not that God needs permission, but what God did is he actually said he chose that he gave us authority on earth. He has chosen to work through you and me, men and women. And so that's why in partnership with God, he's looking for men and women who will come and who will receive all that he has for them so that God can release his great works through them, his signs and his wonders and his miracles, his great businesses, his great um, miracles of healing and of power, great churches that will come forth displaying the awesome reality, the relatability and the miracle working of God, power of God. He's looking for those who will partner with heaven. He's looking for the Elishas who will come and who will say, give me a double portion of your anointing. The anointing is the divine ability that Elisha saw that Elijah had. He wanted a double portion of that. Now in the Bible, we see that God granted that to Elisha because one thing Elijah said, oh, you've asked of me a hard thing, but if you see me when I am taken up, then so be it to you. I just want to say to you at this time, keep looking to Jesus. Don't look around you. Don't miss it. Don't miss what God 
has for you. Don't get distracted by the negativity. Don't get distracted by all of the doubt and the fear and the unknown that's out there right now. Focus on the one who longs for you to know him so closely, to be so tightly acquainted with him right now, to know him and his ways so intimately. He is calling you and he's going to release upon you a double portion. Elisha, he looked and he watched and he saw. He didn't miss it. And he received the double portion anointing. Um, Elijah, his master, he did incredible miracles. He was one of the greatest prophets of his time. But even Elisha exceeded that. God wants us in this hour of his power to go above and beyond, to go into the new. This is a way we haven't been before, but the Lord says, fear not, I go before you, I go with you, and I will release my power and my works that will be a sign and a wonder to many through you. Now, Elijah, when he left, Elisha, as I said, saw him go. And Elisha, who had that double portion anointing, they, he accomplished in his lifetime double the miracles that Elijah, who had gone before him, had done. He accomplished 28 miracles in total. You can read up and you can check up on me if you like. And Elijah, he, um, there was uh, 14 miracles through his lifetime. Whatever you have been doing before in business, the Lord says, whatever disappointments have gone before you, God also promises you through his word in Zechariah, double for your trouble. You can take the truth of God's word and you can apply it to your life and your situation. Whatever trouble you've gone through, you take double in Jesus name. You take also, if you have been in business before, I'm looking at our business, Hollinger Field Investments was established at a time whenever people were fearful, people were holding back. I had just launched, when everything seemed like it was looking a-okay and rosy, um, I launched um, our property company it must be around, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago now. Before that, I've been in marketing and, and running a marketing and PR um, business. And the Lord really led me into property. And the Lord showed me at that time, I, I took on this, it was my first big project. And I was feeling all grown up and like a really big girl. And I was doing my first multi-million pound deal um, with a, a number of around 50 or 60 apartments and just as everything was riding on the high and, you know, the, the, the business world calls it, you know, we're just riding that great curve. Um, and we were at the peak, but we didn't see just how quickly that peak was about to <laughs> decline. And banks started to pull the rug from underneath just like that in every direction, similar to what we're seeing with COVID-19 pulling the rug from underneath people's ways of life, but in a different way right now. And with, uh, at that particular time, I was away on, um, I nearly said honeymoon. <laughs> I was away on our 10th wedding anniversary with my amazing hubby. And we had little Yella Grace, who was very, she was just a baby at the time. She came away with us and it was a surprise trip to Alicante uh, for, for a few days. And I'll never forget being there and out on the balcony and seeing my phone just bouncing up and down off the, the table out there and feeling this real foreboding inside me, not knowing why. But when I took the calls, it was, I mean, lawyers calling me, asking me what to do, saying, Look, are you hearing the news? Um, the banks are, are shutting down on, on investors. They're not honouring um, commitments and deals. And we were committed as a business to around 50 or 60, as I said, um, apartments. And we are light in darkness as children of God. I was completely new to this arena. But I knew that as children of God, we always extend hope, which is a confident expectation of God and good. And so I was telling the lawyers over the phone, hey, leave it with me. We will come through. There is a solution. I'll come back to you. And I hung up the phone feeling like a con woman. 
um, away in uh, overseas abroad feeling everything so out of control and I felt the Lord speak to me as I cried out to God help me similar to what we're doing right now crying out to God for businesses and saying help us God show us the way to go and I felt the Lord speak to me and say part of your warfare Christine is you just carry on as normal. I said, Lord, how can I carry on on this resort whenever I've got these investors, people who have trusted me, who are expecting to achieve their property um, at the end of the month and developers, uh, famous household name developer in the UK that I've committed to. I've, I'm going to have complete, it's my first proper deal and I'm a person of my word because I'm a child of God. That meant more to me than money. And do you know, through that experience, I'll never forget the Lord saying to me, speaking to me on a sunbed and saying, Christine, you've, and it, it speaks about this in, in the Bible, I believe it's in Isaiah, if you can't run with the footmen, how can you run with the horses? And you know, I, I thought, God, this isn't just a, a small fry scenario here. This is pretty huge and significant. But what the Lord showed me is this is nothing compared to what I'm going to have you do for me and the conquests and victories that we are going to as we partner together and partner with heaven that God will accomplish in the future as we trust him. What we cannot do, let's allow God to do through us. And I surrendered to God. The long story short of that, God gave me an incredible, God-given, miraculous strategy. All of the investors went through. We fulfilled on our commitment and our word to that developer. It catapulted our business into spheres of trust with developers like um, I could only have ever dreamt possible. Um, and that was all by the hand of the Lord God established our business in disaster. There is nothing that he cannot do. And something God spoke to me when I was there in Alicante in the whirlpool this time. When I again, I was feeling like a con woman and the, but saying, Lord, I'm doing what you're telling me to do. I'm carrying on. You said this is my warfare. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Christine, by the time you are 40, Hollinger Field Investments, will have made a million. Now, bear in mind, it was a new startup company. Anyone in business knows that a business takes around three years minimum to even break even. And here God was saying, you'll make um, a million, which would have been in a year's time from that date. Um, but I just took God at his word. The only person I shared it with was my wonderful husband at dinner that night. And you know what? He's always my greatest encourager. He didn't laugh at me. He didn't put me down. I just shared with him what I felt God had said and what he'd spoken to me quite miraculously and impossibly in the the um, that whirlpool that day at a time whenever it looked like everything was completely bellies up. And he said, well, honey, that's absolutely fantastic. If God says it, wow, we believe it. Let's just see what God will do. Um, fast forward a year from that date. And I received a text message through when the accounts were all being finalised and done. And it was just before my big 40th birthday. And as they were signing off the accounts, a very excited FD <laughs> sent through uh, a text to say, wow, you're not going to believe this. In our first, this first year, HFI, Hollinger Field Investments, has just made, wait for it, you... I pray get God's incredible humour and his wink over this whenever the figure came through. One million and forty thousand pounds. There was even a 40k birthday bonus on there. Not that I took that birthday bonus, let me hasten to add, because the, the next thing that the Lord showed me was sow it to grow it. And that's what we have been about as a business up until now. And we will continue to be sowing and growing God's kingdom. Nothing thrilled my heart more today than um, receiving through from Ghana in Africa a work we've been involved with since my eldest son, who's now 19, was just on my first trip, ministry trip to Ghana when he was one years old, um, where I, I was speaking and ministering with IGO, International Gospel Outreach, and Kingsley Armstrong, 
my first trip there which so touched and moved my heart with the incredible work and the schools and reaching the children and the work that Bishop Osmond, I always call him, Awusu, was doing out there. That as a business, that's something we've been involved with um, and have seen, just to have the pictures come through today of the children receiving food, the funds just before we went into lockdown, we still felt that wasn't a time that we needed to lock down on our giving because what is God's is God's. All our lives belong to him. And so we still sent through some some funding and saw the pictures come through today of that. The business was established on the principle of we are blessed to be a blessing. Now, at this time of COVID-19, we have had to, we have been stopped in our tracks. Businesses have been stopped in their tracks. And God wants you to reevaluate, to seek his face. And as I wandered around outside, when I was praying and I was prayer walking and I was crying on God, the Lord spoke to me. And here's what God showed me. It's time to, two words, but they're power packed. Go again. All I ever need is the word of God. That's what my business was established on. That is what God wants to establish and to continue to grow businesses on today. And he's calling business leaders to seek him, to turn to his ways. What the Lord showed me is don't just follow the sheep with shares. Find the new that God wants to do. Stocks and shares, they're great. Invest in what has been though. That's what stocks and shares, as good as they are, as great as you may think they are, stocks and shares are investing in what has already been. The Holy Spirit wants to uncover and to make known. And my cry was, oh God, for your name's sake, for the glory of your name. May that be our purpose and our cry. It's not for our own selfish benefit, to feed our own selfish lusts and desires but as I said before it's blessed to be a blessing in this time of reset and evaluating God wants to bring businesses back to him and God is saying then will you go again and yes if you're investing in shares that's great but keep looking for the new that God wants to do at this time I'm only sharing what God has shared with my heart. The Bible says, put your hope in the Lord, travel steadily along his path. He will honour you by giving you the land. I believe the Lord doesn't want you panic buying, panic rushing into anything right now. I was, and we as a business were close to doing that yesterday, but the Lord is saying, go steadily. Just keep watching just keep looking. I am really mad at the evil behind this COVID-19 right now. This giant, like a Goliath, has been taunting, has been mocking and has been defying the children and the purposes of God. The evil behind COVID-19 will be exposed. I declare it by the word of the Lord. It will come down in Jesus' name, that the crown will be knocked off its head and the evil behind it that has been wrought in darkness will be brought and exposed in the light. I believe today, as the word of God shows, we are seeing it very clearly at this time. Men are calling evil good and good evil. Don't just look at what you think looks good, but ask God to give you eyes to see. I've said this to you before, ears to hear, both are a gift from the Lord. I think the last time I was speaking, I was sharing the reality of that. God wants us to see clearly. Don't just take at face value what is out there, but seek God because everything that looks good isn't necessarily good. And that some of that which you actually personally don't like and that you want to call evil, actually, that can be the good. So let's not miss out on what God is doing and what God is saying at this time. It says in Psalm 37 verse 7, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. That word wait patiently, we didn't have um, an English word for it when it was translated 
from the, the Hebrew because there are various meanings for the word wait and there's that waiting as uh, where it, it means like looking and watching and I felt as I as I was prayer walking around the garden the other day that's how God wants us to be in business and in ministry leaders and in every leadership um, appointment that we have right now to be looking and to be watching just like waiting uh, it's like a waiter like a servant waiting and watching every move of their of their master um, we need to be watching every move of God and whenever he moves we move we want to be so close to him just like Elisha was watching and was so close to Elijah and receive the double portion of God's power, of God's miracles, of God's anointing. That double portion that is ours today as children of God. Um, that word, wait patiently, in this context, it was the Hebrew word chul. don't know how you pronounce it, C-H-U-L. But it actually means to turn in a circle, to whirl, to twist, to revolve. God's turning businesses, uh, businesses and lives around right now as we wait on him, as we look to him. It means to writhe, to be in labour of childbirth, to bear a child. I felt that this last day or so. I have literally felt like I've been whirling, like I've been with my tears as I spoke to my business partners, those other directors. I was whirling, I was writhing. It was like a woman in childbirth. I just knew God wanted to bring forth a new and I just didn't want to do anything other than what God wanted us to do because it's very easy to act in haste and then you will repent at leisure. But I needed to hear from heaven and as I've heard from heaven I want to pass on to you because you need to hear this too. It means to to be born, to be afraid, that fear which moves you to action. Some fear is good, I'm always saying fear not, but listen to the fear that is good like the fear of not missing out on what God has for you. That causes you to press in. It means to tremble, to reel, to rage. I'll tell you what, I felt some of that rage as I've been whirling, as I feel like I've been birthing, as I feel like I've been writhing. I have been raging. I've been raging at that dirty devil. I have been raging at the evil that is behind COVID-19, the wicked plan that was devised in secret. I have been raging. I have wept over lives that have suffered and that have been lost. I have wept for your business. I have wept and I know that as we cry and as we call on the Lord, he is going to answer our prayers and he is he is working in the midst of this. So be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. When he moves, we move. Wait on the Lord. That waiting right now may mean that you're getting down on your knees like I have been and you're crying out to God. I want to say to you, one today, mark the spot with the cross. There's a place in my garden where I fell on my knees. It's a rugged place, tucked away in, in and around wooded area. And I fell on my knees and I burst and I pleaded with God for businesses. I pleaded with God to be glorified at this time. And as I heard God saying, hey, Christine, it's time to go again. I'm passing on to you. Go again, but go again, first and foremost from a place of surrender. Mark the spot with the cross. Surrender before Jesus. Bow your knee to him. Seek his face and you will find him. I cried out to God in my garden. I thought of the, the verse in Isaiah which says, wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Some of you are so tired and weary and worn. You don't know which way to turn. Your strength will be renewed. You will mount up. You will rise up again. Go again on the wings like eagles. You will run 
and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. The Bible speaks about putting your belt on, girding your loins. That's an old fashioned term, but it's basically buckling everything up and into place so that you can run, that you can go with haste, you can go with speed. And I believe that the gun has been fired and it's time to run. It's time to go again. Seek God though as the Father does. That's what you are to follow through on to and do. Just as Jesus did, there is a double portion anointing upon you. And that double portion, as great as your business was before, expect double in this hour of God's double portion power. Expect it may look impossible. I could even look and think, oh God, how could how could you possibly do again what you've done before? A million in a year. He can do that and so much more because nothing is too difficult for my God. My God, Jesus, he is the great and mighty one. Let's trust him. Let's follow his lead in Jesus' name. The second thing that I just want to encourage you in today is whatever you're facing whatever you're going through God says occupy until I come I've been voicing recently Jesus is coming soon that doesn't mean we sit back and we do nothing as I've said that waiting on the Lord Yes, we often wait on him, we're on our knees, but we're looking and we're waiting and we're watching just like Elijah did and then uh, Elisha did and watching Elijah's every move and then we're ready for action. God wants us waiting in his presence. It's not passive faith, it's active faith. And we follow as he leads in partnership with heaven. Occupy, that word occupy, the meaning is really twofold. One is that you are a steward. You need to be a good steward of all that you have, that you protect. To occupy something, you protect it. It also means to possess. You're, you're possessing something. God wants you to possess all he has for you until he comes, that you will give him and bring him great glory. That's This story was spoken about whenever uh, a... A uh, king was returning to his kingdom and he gave three stewards different amounts of money. Two of them invested wisely and one of them did nothing. The one that did nothing, we know in, the par in that parable, the ruler, the king was so disappointed, disappointed with and he took the little that he had and he gave it to the one who had much. God wants us occupying, um, he wants us protecting being a good steward that's why we can protect and be a good steward by following his lead and being led by his word and by the holy spirit and then it means to be investing it means to be going forward gaining new ground new territories innovating creating god is a creative god he's also a god as you heard me share earlier who's got a great sense of humor he wants you to enjoy and to have fun on this new journey that you're embarking on. And he's going to show up and he's going to show off in your life. There is so much more that I could share today, but I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to continue this message. Go again. But for now, I want to pray. I just sense the Holy Spirit is placing a hold right now. You've got a lot to get your teeth into there. Go to that place of prayer. Mark the spot with a cross. Surrender. Ask the Lord for his double portion to come upon you, upon your family, upon your home, upon your business. And then go forward and occupy until he comes. Because when Jesus returns, he wants to find faith on the earth. No doubt here, no fear here. If you're sick in your body today, I'm going to pray for you. And as I stretch out my hand, and I'm not saying this emptily. Is there such a word? Emptily? Empty? These aren't empty words. Probably a better way of putting it. I'm saying this with all my heart. 
because in our home we have been battling and as I've said last time, defy the lie. We have, as a family, been defying the lies of the enemy and sickness that has sought to come upon us. I know the healing touch of Jesus. And I want to pray for you today if you're sick in your body, if you're sick in your business, if you're sick and pain and heartache and sick maybe in your mind, I want to pray for you today that the Lord is going to renew your mind. He's going to flood your heart and your mind with his peace today. So healing for health, for business, for minds today. If you'll stretch out your hand, I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to sickness right now. I speak to COVID-19 and we bring you down by the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Every sick body, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for healing to flow right now as you speak through me. Release your healing touch and your healing power. Receive your healing today by faith, says the Lord. Receive your healing. It is the Father's good pleasure to give to you of his kingdom. His kingdom is health, it's life, it's joy. It's peace for every sin, sick soul and mind today. I speak of peace for every business on its knees. I declare that is the very place God wants you to be. Now go again with me, says the Lord in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. I haven't shared anything that I thought I was going to share, well, it shared a portion, but that I thought I was going to share with you today, but I've shared what the Holy Spirit wanted me to say, and that's all that matters. I love you all. God bless you. Stay safe.